saw earlier from a distance. Very nervous and unsettled, constantly looking back, making sure they're not being followed by the lions. There's the little baby at the back, safe and sound. I didn't realize there were four giraffe. I only saw two this morning. Might have been that they just joined up with the mum and the calf, because I don't think I saw the calf either this morning. I was worried that it was there, but I didn't actually see it. Oh, this is a female giraffe, and there's something wrong with her. I'm just trying to have a look and see. It looks like she's got a growth between her back legs. I don't think those... It doesn't look normal to me. I don't think it's just swollen nipples from pregnancy. I think there's actually... She's got some kind of something. Maybe it is just swollen from suckling her calf. But I've never seen it that pronounced before. Here's little one. And this little one's on solid food now as well. It's not suckling all that frequently. Hey, was that your first encounter with lions? It might have been. They haven't really been around Juma recently. It might have been quite a terrifying... It must have been quite a terrifying experience for it. Isn't it beautiful? And in an inconvenient position. Uh, Zeta Point, you want to know whether or not giraffe used to have shorter necks? Yes, they did. Um, their giraffe ancestors did used to have shorter necks. And their relative, the Akapi as well, also has a slightly longer neck than other animals. But the idea always when we were in school was that giraffe had long necks so that they could feed higher than other animals. And the same was sort of put forward for Diplodocus and Brachiosaurus and so on, and dinosaurs with very, very long necks. There's an alternate theory as to why they evolved this way, and that is actually reproductive competition. So the longer, the way that giraffe fight is by, I'm going to go back, I think. I don't want to scare her by going forward. Uh, the idea is, the way that males fight is they swing their heads at each other in a process known as necking. And the longer the neck, obviously, the more momentum you can gather and the more force you can hit your opponent with. Can you see it there, Dave? Or shall I go forward again? Perfect. So the idea is basically that the males with longer necks had a higher reproductive or chance of reproducing because they were better at fighting and therefore slowly but surely giraffe evolved to have longer and longer neck necks and you can actually see that i mean giraffe often feed with their heads down right down low they don't always stretch up to the highest reaches there you can see that female's doing it feeding down slightly lower than she might otherwise so that's one of the theories that's put forward as to why giraffe evolved the necks that they have and watching two male giraffe actually fighting, properly fighting, is mind-boggling, the amount of force that they are able to hit each other with. A giraffe skull, I mean, you've seen Gerald's, the giraffe skull in the tent, the one that the Mapani bees or the stingless bees live in. That is heavy. It probably weighs around about 12 kilograms, just the skull alone. Now imagine that with flesh and muscle on the end of the very powerful neck, if you watch slow motion footage of giraffe fighting, you can see the shock ripples and the shock waves that move across their bodies. Louis, you want to know how tall this giraffe is? This is a young one uh, that probably stands just over three meters, just over nine feet, right to the top of its head. Maybe actually just about three meters to the top of its head whereas its mum is probably about four and a half metres tall. Record-breaking giraffe, in terms of height, was a male that was over six feet tall. Sorry, six metres tall. <laughs> Not six feet tall. That's basically just Brent. Six metres tall. Sometimes the conversion between feet and metres catches us out. Colleen, you want to know if the mum and the calf have a name? They don't. We haven't given... I mean, it, it's generally... 
unusual for giraffe to have names. However, there are viewers that have been watching for many years who are really fascinated by giraffe, and Eileen's name comes to mind. And she does, she has got to know the various giraffe of this area, and I think a lot of them have been given, I know a lot of them have been given nicknames, essentially, as a way of telling the difference between them. And just like our leopards, their spot patterns are unique. So it is, you can very clearly tell the difference between the different giraffe if you spend enough time observing them. And I imagine that if we actually spent as much time as we do with leopards, we'd come to recognize the individual, or, or hyenas, we'd come to recognize the individuals almost immediately, just on sight. So we know the mum and giraffe because we've spent a bit of time looking at them. The mum and giraffe, the mum and calf, is what I meant to say. The mum and calf just by spending time with them. But I don't think, once that calf is older, I don't think I would recognize it off the bat if I saw it again. So no, they don't have official names. Skip, very, very well observed. Skip, you wanted to know if those dots that we saw on the giraffe earlier are ticks, and if so, will the ox pickers come and eat them? And of course, ticks love to sit on the more sensitive patches of skin, and you can see just under this giraffe's armpits, you can see some ticks settled. So Skip, you are absolutely right. They are ticks, and yes, the ox pickers will come and pick them off and help the giraffe out, just make their lives a bit more comfortable. And you'll often see giraffe, what they'll do, because the ticks like to sit on those really hard to reach places, if they don't have a convenient ox picker at hand, they'll walk up to a tree and they will bend the tree over in between their front legs and their back legs and they'll scratch the ticks off like that. Which is why sometimes you've got to be careful where exactly you walk or which branch you shake upon yourself or try to swat ticks off with yourself because you actually might end up with more ticks than you intended. And sometimes they misshape, the, the trees become completely misshapen. You just see these poor trees that have been bent double by the scratching attentions of giraffe. But well done, Skip. Very well observed. Our ox pickers, I can hear some ox pickers. They don't seem to have settled on the giraffe yet. But they are sometimes do more harm than good. Anna Marie, you were wondering, because we spoke about giraffes fighting earlier. You want to know if I've ever seen a giraffe fight? I have. I've seen a few very serious giraffe fights. It is actually quite scary in a way, just because you start to worry about the individuals who are fighting. Some of my most, the fiercest battles I've seen giraffe engage in and that I've actually tried to separate have strangely enough been, oh, there's an ox pecker. Look, Skip. There you go. Picking away at the face for now. One of the, a, a giraffe fight that I tried to break up, and it, that is very common, is across fence lines. They see another male across a fence line, and they decide they have to fight it, which is obviously relatively pointless for them. It does end up doing damage to the giraffe. They can injure themselves on the fences, and at the same time, they damage the fences. And a lot of the times, if you drive along and you see game fences bent double, it's because male giraffe have been fighting across them. I've got a picture somewhere that looks like a loving <laughs> moment between two giraffe that were actually fighting across a fence. There are the ticks. Come on, ox picker. You've got hard work to do. You'd better start moving down the giraffe. I can't see if it's got its ox picker hat on still or not. Does it? I can't see either, Dave, and I feel like if I move forward, she's going to move. Oh, as you can imagine, against gravity and in, in sort of the way in which a giraffe is designed, they must have one of the most powerful hearts of any animal because they've got to pump blood all the way up from the from the chest right up to the brain. And they're actually very, very specialized in that sense. Um, if the heart of an adult giraffe, for Happy Jay, can be up to or over 25 pounds, so around about 11 kilograms, and is phenomenally strong. 
They've also got specialized blood vessels in their neck, cushioning around their brain to make sure that they absorb as much blood as possible to be transferred over diffusion surfaces. And their skin around their legs is very tight. So the blood pressure can be high enough that they, obviously, well, the blood doesn't sink to the bottom of their legs, especially around their veins, because veins, of course, don't have much in the way of blood pressure.